Hi, my name's Katie and welcome to my channel. I wanted to make this video just as a bit of a general one to go through my African cichlid setup that I've got and just show you the full setup and everything that's actually in it for anyone who's interested in setting up a fish tank that's similar to this so you kind of know the bits and bobs and everything that makes the whole fish tank. Today we actually reached 1000 subscribers which is an amazing milestone for this channel. I just do this because I enjoy fish and making videos and making content but it's so amazing to quantify that and see that it's actually valued by people so thank you so much. I think let's get into the video and I'll show you just the setup that I've got here behind me and give you a bit of an idea of everything and you know things that you might like to get for setting something up that's similar to this. So I'll just turn this around. The tank that I've got here is a Waterbox Clear Pro 7225 and I got the cabinet um, and the tank combination from Waterbox. Then the stocking that I've got in my tank is a mixed Lake Malawi species tank. So I've got a mix of Embuna, Haps and Peacocks. The Embuna are the rock dwelling cichlids, so these ones with the kind of rounder faces. The Haps are the ones that are got kind of like the bigger heads and the bigger mouths. They're more kind of predatory type of cichlids. Then the peacock cichlids are the ones that have more of these kind of like flary, kind of colourful, dainty fins, I guess I would describe them as. So I've got a mix of all of those types of African cichlids in here. And I've got a bunch of holy rock in the tank as well. So this white rock that you see in here, basically it looks nice, but it serves a function as well. It's a place for the embuna to hide in, but what it also does is raise the pH of the water. So African cichlids like water that is quite alkaline and they enjoy sitting around like an 8 to an 8.2 for the Lake Malawi cichlids. So having that in there just helps to keep that pH up. When I do a water change, I've got a video on that, which I'll link in this video if you're interested in seeing how I do that. I also add this Lake Malawi buffer to the water too, because the tap water pH is quite a bit lower and adding the buffer just helps to make sure that there's not gonna be a huge pH swing that happens. Um, I also thought I'd just add, in addition to the African cichlids in here, I've got three bristle nose catfish too. I used to have a lot of blackbeard algae on my rocks and the bristlenose catfish have managed to eat all of that and make some room for the nice green algae, which I actually really like having in here. So that's been really helpful. In terms of lighting, I've got three freshwater AI Prime lights on here. These are lights that you can operate with Bluetooth through an app and they've got a full customizable color spectrum, which is really handy because I like that I can make them as intense or as dim as I want to. And then they've also got a function where they can slowly turn on and mimic a sunrise in the morning and a sunset in the night. In terms of intensity, I've got a mix. I've got it between about 16% to 30% for the different types of colors. And I just keep it around that because I don't need anything too intense since I'm not growing plants in here. Then in terms of timing for the lights, I have the sunrise from 10 o'clock to 11 a.m. in the morning. And for sunset, that is from 10 p.m. to 11 p.m. So they're on for about 12 hours a day. And I normally have them on more towards the night time since that's when I'm home more and get to enjoy the tank. I've also got a wave maker in the tank. And what that does is it just helps to get the water circulated throughout the tank and help get any of the debris that's floating around into the filters. But it also helps to kind of break up the water a little bit and give a current, which I think helps the fish stay a little bit more stimulated and gives them something else to focus on other than each other, which I find can diffuse aggression. The other cool thing about having a wave maker is that it helps to oxygenate the water by actually breaking the surface a little bit so it helps for the oxygen to diffuse with the water basically because fish do need to have oxygen in the water in order to be able to breathe and you want to make sure you've got some surface agitation and water movement on top of your tank to make sure that their water is oxygenated. In terms of filtration, I have on this tank two canister filters. 
So the canister filters work so that the, they suck in the water here and then they push it out up here. And I've got one on each side of the tank. Now, you don't necessarily want your water to just be going around in a circle so that it's pushing out and then being sucked back up. But I find that if you just aim the outlets away from where the intake is, then that does a good enough job. And I'll show you the canister filters just quickly. So these are the Fluval FX6s. I found them to be really good in terms of maintaining the clarity of the water and just doing their job as filters. They're nice and big as well, which is handy. The only issue that I had with them was vibration. I think partially because the back of this tank, well, this cabinet is quite open. So any vibration would kind of resonate throughout the timber. But to help with that, I got some sound proofing stuff so just to absorb some of the vibration and the sound and I found too that making sure that the pipes that connect to the intake and the outlet are as short as possible also helps to minimize any vibration so I've just got one on each side of the tank under the cabinet and then in terms of heating the water I keep the water at about 26 degrees and I've got a heater just on either side of the tank I believe these are 1500 watt heaters. Sorry, no, they're 300 watt heaters. I don't know where I got 1500 from. 300 watt heaters. So they're pretty big heaters and they can use up a lot of electricity. The heater I've also got on this side is connected basically to an external thermostat, which I have down here. And the purpose behind having this thing being the thermostat is that sometimes with these filters, I mean with these heaters, they can break the thermostat and then if the thermostat breaks, it can cause it to overheat your tank, which you really don't want. So it's just recommended for these types of heaters to have an external, more reliable thermostat. I do not have one yet for my heater on this side, but I should probably get one the only reason I don't have one is that we just came out of summer and I only had one heater on during summer, whereas in winter I turned both of them on. And they're pretty new, so I'm trusting they're not gonna break anytime soon, but I do plan to get one of those external thermostats for, for them. So I'll just also quickly add that on top of my tank, I've got some MVS aquarium lids, which are just custom made lids for rimless aquariums. It's really important to have lids with African cichlids because they do jump. Uh, they just get aggressive with each other sometimes and chase each other around and with you know not really knowing what they're doing, sometimes they will just jump and then end up on the ground, which isn't ideal, especially when you've got really beautiful cichlids that you've been growing out. You wanna kind of avoid that from happening. So if you do get a rimless tank like what I've got, then it's good just to account for that you're probably going to want to spend a little bit more on just getting some lids made for them. And these lids, I've got a video on them as well, which I'll link in this one. They've been really, really good. In terms of substrate, I have just unicorn pool filter sand, which is just a really nice cheap sand that also has that nice white look. It was about $22 Australian for 20 kilograms, and I've got five bags, so about 100 kilograms of sand in here. I mainly wanted to have a deep sand bed because I've got the Texas Holy Rock, which is this stuff, which is really super heavy. And I just wanted something for it to be able to sit on. But I also wanted the African cichlids to have the opportunity to be able to dig around and stuff in the substrate since they really like doing that. And so I just thought I'd go for a cheaper substrate since I wanted so much. But then what I've also done is mixed in some bits of crushed coral, which you'll see some of that here, just to help with um, raising the pH to 8.2. And I've also got crushed coral inside of my canister filters as well. And that just helps to kind of keep it around that 8.2 for the pH. The other thing I'll just quickly mention is that I've got freshwater mussels in here. I started with, I think it was seven and two of them got eaten, but it's been about five months now and the other five seem to be doing okay. The purpose of the freshwater mussels is just to help keep the water nice and clear. So they filter water by eating like bits of algae and stuff out of the water column and debris and stuff. 
and they filter each about 50 liters of water a day which is pretty cool so they're just kind of like a nice little addition i guess that you can add to your tank in terms of food i feed my african cichlids a variety of things so i feed them this cichlid excel food which is like a floating kind of large pellet I feed them this absolute colour food, which is what makes them really nice and colourful. Then I also give them a mix of New Life Spectrum. I give them Algae Max and there's another one that is the Thera A, um, New Life Spectrum food that I give to them. And I also sometimes give them spirulina bug bites as well, but I don't feed that too often because it's a flake food and it kind of is a little bit addictive I find. They really like it and then they don't want to eat their healthier kind of food. So I try to minimize that as much as possible. So really, I mean, that is everything. I'm just gonna turn this back around now just to finish the video. That's my tank, um, just kind of speed running through explaining everything that's in it. I've got more kind of detailed, in-depth videos about each of these things. Like I've got a video about the Freshwater AI Prime lights that shows the app and stuff. I've got a video I did a while about a while ago about the lids as well. Um, one about unboxing my water box tank and everything, um, which I'll link in the description of this video and throughout the video as well. You probably would have seen them pop up. So you can check those more kind of detailed descriptions out about the tank if you would like to see anything like that. So that's all for this video. Again, thank you so much to everyone who's been so supportive of this channel and who has subscribed and liked and commented. It really means a lot to me and it's great that we've been able to make it to 1000 subscribers and hopefully we can keep building even more of a community. So if you liked this video, please give it a like, let me know what you thought and I would love for you to join the community and subscribe to this channel as well. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.